What is going on, everybody? Bobby Pat, the man, Eric Sheets Haber. We are going to be talking through tonight, Thursday's NBA slate. We've got real NBA slates all week, which is kind of fun. But I had a really, really bad night uh, last night, and Sheets did not. Sheets had a nice run. Sheets, why don't you talk a little bit about? Yeah, so, so so I fin- I finally listened to myself. Yeah, I I, I, I was. Well, when I say that, it's two things. Number one is I was I was kind of on on Rui as a value play all day long, and then and then I spent listen. Obviously, we spent a lot of time from six to seven o'clock going through all the injury stuff, and and you know what I mean. That was a that was a rough day for like content people. Yeah. You know I, mean? I had to keep on updating, and keep on doing whatever, and and uh, and then the first thing I was happy about was that I, I said, you know what, I'm still going to stick with him. So I played Rui at one percent in in the big buy in. Um, now in the MMEs or whatever, when I ran with Saberson, whatever, I ended up with all the same crap that failed like everybody else had. You know, <laughs> I had the 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 the, the Connaughton and and the and the uh, Javon Carter, all the same crap. So I didn't I didn't escape that. But then one one thing that I did, which I kept on swearing I'm supposed to do, and I kept on yelling myself for not doing it, was actually paying attention to like late swap and news, right? Like after the slate started. So after these eight o'clock games started, I didn't. Really think I had much of a shot, except I did have Giannis going, so obviously I had to pay attention. Um, and then I saw that when that when um, when Sabonis was ruled in, I was saying, okay, what do I have to do? And I, I I played with a couple of different different variations, and I ended up getting to. Um, it was an interesting decision I had. I could have swapped it around. I was going to play Highland, right? When when obviously yeah. when 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 Murray was ruled out. But I had a, I had a weird two by two. I was considering back and forth. I would, would either have played. I don't even know which, which was better. No, it had to be better with the way my way. But I could have played Sabonis, and but then I would have needed to play like Ish Smith or something like that. Yeah, just because the way the position eligibility worked. Or I could have played Conshar and Fox. And for whatever reason, I talked myself into thinking that Conshar was a better play than he than he, he kind of was. But I ended up playing with him and and Fox and Fox uh, just because listen the way the way everything kind of played out. Nobody had slots left, in the, you know what I mean. So he yeah. ended up at one point two percent owned, and uh, he got on my good side again. Like the day before, he got was on my bad side, and uh, that, that's what these uh, that's what these guards can do sometimes. And he did really, really nicely. And the good thing, by the way, is that I also think that like at the end, it really was basically like seventy percent to go to overtime with like four seconds to go or something. Mm-hmm. But I think I was actually better off um with just not going overtime only because like Contra was never getting back in the game and I had all of these freaking Jokic people Jokic lineups that were that were that were that were gonna threaten to just destroy my life if it ever went to overtime yeah. so and there were people like five guys in this game you know what I mean so mm-hmm. I, was, I was very happy to say you know what just look, take, take, take this and be done because I tell you I was um I uh listen I've been struggling in this tournament this is a very tough tournament and and it's also a tough tournament to play when you're MME and not paying as much attention to it. You know what I mean? Because yeah. I end up getting lazy. Well, I'll take my best line, put it in this, I'll make a couple of tweaks or whatever. But it's a tough one, man. I mean, like, it, it took me, I mean, look at that. It took me like two 1% owned guys. <laughs> and that's not easy, right? Yeah. Um, well, you know what? Fortunately, like you said, um, I overcame the Stewart a little bit. And you said, hey, listen, it could have gone either way. I could have, I could have picked uh, somebody else over there. But um, I, th- I thought 4,800 was cheap enough. You know, I, I'm, I'm kind of happy with that. Happy. Yeah, the, the, you know, it, it's a little unlucky in the sense that you could have, you know, Nas Reed at 4,700. Right. Sense. It's, but the real, but the real, but the real hero for everybody last night was the, Alec, was the Alec Burke. Was the Alec Burks? <laughs> yeah, Alec Burks. That was, and and, and I'm, I'm looking forward to the next fading Alec Burks. Um, mm-hmm. I think I believe he made his first nine shots, and six of them were threes. And, and yeah. I think he made every shot except for his last one. Yeah, that it was it was just a ridiculous performance. Great job by him. I, you know, if you played him, you obviously were happier than I am. But it was it it worked. Um, and and it's just that you know the Detroit value ended up being pretty good as as we sort of suspected that a couple players from Detroit make sense. Uh, they certainly you could have played three guys and, and it would have made a lot of sense. So I did. I want to ask you a staking question. I guess I. Uh, I can ask you here or whatever. Yeah. I did something that I, th- I thought was I, I thought was really nice. I thought it was the right thing to do. Um, so yesterday, actually two days ago, in fact, I think that's why I got good karma. So two days ago, I posted a package and it, something happened where it was like the wrong date or something. So I edited it and I just I just redid it or something. Mm-hmm. But I kind of screwed it up and I ended up put, making duplicates. So, oh. I, so I put two... Of, and I sell like 20% of each of them. And then the next day, 
um, you know that that was the one that was the one thing that happened to have done well in. And the guy came back to me at stake. He said, "Listen, just so you know, this was a duplicate. Um, you know, obviously you, you didn't mean to do that. You know, you should. You know, should I, I'll tell I'll tell the people it's a duplicate." I'm like, "You know what? Just give it to him. You know, he he, he thought that he, whoever it was thought they had the, the action on it. I don't want to be like that. You that's know, a nice that's a nice thing to do. Yeah, and I said that he was very very. And whoever it was, they sent me a message. He was very he said very honorable, whatever it is. I guess I didn't have to do that, but it just seemed like listen, if if it, if, it, if uh, you know he he was rooting, he expected to have the action." So right. I figure whatever, you know, so, so I, maybe I got a little good karma from that. And, uh, and maybe he, maybe the same guy participated in the, uh, in the mega AIDS. All right. Yeah. Uh, you, you ready to get a go after today? Yeah, let's get after it. Um, let's go game by game here. It's, it's, you're going to have some pretty concentrated shock um, as far as my early looks are concerned. And it's going to involve your team again, which we'll get into in a few games, but uh, you want to go start off with the, with the first one, OKC Charlotte here. Yeah, so right off the bat, you got two thirty nine and 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 a uh, and a pick'em total uh, and a pick'em spread, pretty much. Uh, this is uh, something you're going to want to have interest in. Uh, I'm just gazing at these other games. I mean, two twenty three, two twenty seven, with freaking Celtics, which is you know whatever. The Memphis game looks like a good total. The Knicks game, you say is going to have value. We'll get into that. Dallas game could have blowout risk, and that's usually slow. But yeah, so I think this game is is interesting, and I'm getting, boy, oh boy, who are these guys? All right, so I presume that Lamelo is going to be a be a playable. He's he's ninety seven hundred. I mean, that's 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 rough. I th I have to assume he's closer to nine k on Fanduel. I'm just guessing. Um, so I guess I would start with that, and with Shea at ten one. I think ten one for Shea is a lot more amenable to me than. Uh, than, than LaMelo at 97. I wonder if we could just not play them both, though. Um, uh, I guess I'll ask you, as usual, to comment on P.J. Washington. Um, uh, but the guy who, for whatever reason, I don't know if you can play this guy. Literally, I've never heard of him. I'm getting a like a 5.5x projection from a Mark Williams. Um, that, well, I guess because Nick Richard must be out or something like that, right? It's got to be. Um, so maybe he's the new backup center or something like that for Charlotte. I don't know. That's, that, that's, that's what I'm seeing on my list here. So I guess, uh, Charlotte would be PJ Washington, um, uh, uh, LaMelo, I guess on FanDuel and, and, and X, I want to get your opinion and OKC. I, I don't see much reason to, well, I was about to say, I don't see much reason to go beyond Shea, but I guess Poku was out, right? I mean, he was yeah. hurt his last game. So that's got to open up something. I just don't know exactly what. Well, yeah, the whole front court is gone. Um, yeah, Baisley, 3K. So Baisley is going to look like a good play. Um, I guess they'll start Muscala, and Baisley will come off the bench. If Baisley starts, he'll be, like, in everyone's lineup. I'll probably play him as well. But I, I just, you know, always buyer beware kind of a thing. And you never know if they might do something weird, like start Omaru Omaruyi. They, they sometimes just – just they might start Kenrich and play small. He's active, by the way. I, I played this guy as you, this Omori guy. Yeah, it's just you need to get the he's he's active, but he never really played significant minutes right. so far. So right. it's a little just throwing it out there. So keep an eye out. We'll, we'll get the starting lineups before the game. The way to prioritize right now, I do think it's I feel I think Baisley even off the bench is 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 completely reasonable. Um, he's minimum cost. I can't I can't argue against it. And as we know, bigs against Charlotte are not just a thing. They literally just dismantle this team. Unfortunately, none of these bigs fit that type of category. So I'm sort of struggling with the decision. I've got it as Baisley, Muscala, or Jalen Williams, maybe to go with any of the other guys. And I think that you, you know, you consider Shea and uh, Shea or Luca, and, and I'm sorry, Shea or uh, uh, Giddy. And I think both are, are are very reasonable today. I think Giddy will get more ownership, and I think Shea has you know great upside. But I, I do like Giddy here. Um, so I, I'm definitely considering this 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 whole game this as as a potential stack. Because I like Washington on the other side. I actually like Plumlee. I wouldn't play those two together. But I think, you know, unless you were fully game stacking this. But I do think you're playing one of Plumlee or Washington as a as sort of a priority today. I actually think Plumlee gets a boost as well without Nick Richards. Because it's not like they're dying to give Mark Williams a million minutes. Um, and then I, I would consider Mark Williams a, lar a large field tournament play. Um, I don't want to play him at any sort of ownership. Um, and Richard is still officially questionable. Like some sites have him as out. Yeah, I see them. Some sites have him as as questionable. So keep an eye out because Mark Williams won't look like anything unless unless he is out. Um, 
But that's the way it actually it actually says it was upgraded to questionable. So yeah. Okay. So so yeah. I mean, so maybe more trending towards playing. It's, it's certainly possible in that case, Mark. I, I'm not all that into the Mark Williams thing anyway. I, it's just a guy I'm considering. Um, if, if if there's no uh, if there's no Nick Richards, but um, you know maybe they do try to do some different things in Charlotte because they've had so so much trouble with the big so far this season. Um, but I, you know, I don't think I'm going to get to a ton of Lamelo. I have no problem with if you want to do a Lamelo Shea thing. I'm just not probably going to get to it. And I, I do think that getting to 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 a little maybe the Giddy Rogier is a little bit more of the affordable stack in this game. You know, the affordable guys that go against each other with a Jalen Williams or a or a, a Baisley and a, and a Washington. That might be what I prefer to do rather than going all the way up to Lamelo, just because it's hard to get to him price wise. Uh, with some of the other players that are, are spend ups on this slate. For are, are there, are there guys, and you kind of alluded to this, but I'll just re ask it this way. Are there guys in that OKC front court that we can play if they don't start as opposed to other guys where we really need to make sure that they start? Uh, I don't like Muscala is not in play unless he starts to me. Um, but even then, I don't think it's like a great play. It's, it's, it's a guy you could definitely take a, ch a chance on. Um, you know, he he did put up put up thirty five in the last game, so I, I have no problem with with playing Muscala if he does start. Uh, but right now, Baisley would be the preferred guy for me. Um, Kenrich Williams is is a is a is a fine flyer off the bench, but I don't think that it's something I'm, I want to prioritize. So I, I, I'm I mean they still have enough bodies to where we don't have to I don't think dive too far into their bench. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. But everybody obviously is better as a starter for them uh, in general. But it's it's also no guarantees with them. They they they, they just might go out there and play everybody twenty minutes outside of Gideon and, and Shea, which they do plenty of, uh, except for Jalen Williams. They they will play Jalen Williams minutes. All right, let's move on to a less interesting game, probably for DFS purposes. Um, Sheets, what do you got in this Cleveland indie game? Yeah, I'm gonna lose like five hundred or something. Um, maybe not 500, but I'm going to lose, I'm going to, I'm going to lose, I'm going to lose something. Maybe I'll lose 300. I don't know how many lineups I'm going to do it, but, but I'm going to play LeVert going back to Indiana. That's, that's what I'm going to do. Just not for, not for much. Um, may, maybe 300 until too much. Maybe, maybe like three or four like fadeaways or something like that. I mean, why wouldn't you play him? He's coming off a sparkling 13 point fantasy point performance and literally no results on this, this whole panel get there. Um, but uh, just, just again, just pure, just, uh, just tra true transparency. There will, there will be a little bit of exposure to Karis LeVert going back to Indiana in probably the worst. Uh, well, for them, it's probably a pace up spot, right? Um, going to Indiana, I don't know. But I, I agree with you. I think that um, that overall, it's probably a weak fantasy game. I imagine, imagine that Jared Allen probably. Well, ja I think Jared Allen. Mobley would be my favorites. Um, Kevin Love, it just always confuses me. Uh, Donovan Mitchell, just the regular guys in Cleveland if I'm going to play anybody. And on the Indiana side, I'm not I'm honestly not getting much. If you want to know the truth? So I'll 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 bite. I'll take a little bit of stupid Karis LeVert just for spite, and and uh, that's pretty much it. This game. Yeah, and I, and I was going to mention this in the in the other game we talked about. It is weird that people keep playing the the Nemhard thing, and he literally just never ever gets there with Tyrese. I mean, he won't ever, but he never has. So it's sort of like the Dort thing from the other night. Like that was bizarre that Dort was twenty seven percent owned, or maybe even higher, because he was forty nine hundred. Literally, it was the exact thing people do. They they see a they see the price drop below five, and now he's fifty one, and no one wants to play him, which makes sense because he never gets there either. But it's kind of interesting that, that people keep making these plays and they keep projecting well, at least at, at, on early looks. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I think Neesmith would be the, the guy if I was going to play pay down, I would prefer Neesmith over Nemhard. Um, because of the matchup, I actually think Jalen Smith is in play. You'd think that they, this would be a kind of thing where they might play two bigs instead of getting, giving Neesmith extra run. But the problem is they're just deep enough. So large field would be Jalen Smith for me uh, on Indiana. Uh, I, nobody is a priority for me on Indiana anyway. I like all of the Cleveland side of it. It's, an, it's a good pace thing for all of them. I think you play one of Mitchell or Garland if you can. Um, I think that those guys sort of rate in a similar, like, I just think one of them, I mean, when, when does one of them not get to like, like, like really get there usually means it's a blowout or somebody else is getting, you know, Garland had 65 the other night, uh, 56 a few games before that Mitchell 
you know, and they've had some weird games and Mitchell's hasn't shot the ball. Well, he's been five of 16 and four of 16, the last two times out, put a 54 before that. So I like the idea of getting some exposure to those guys. And then I, I think Mobley and the, and Jared Allen are both totally in play. I don't think it's a good idea to like, just keep playing Mobley when he's putting up nothing, but it is a good matchup for what it's worth. Um, and, and, and Jared Allen, I, I think that it's, it's just a good matchup. So Allen or Mobley, I'm totally fine with, but Mitchell and Garland is more of a priority for me. Um, and, and, and needless to say, I mean, I do see Halliburton with a, with a Q tag. Um, uh, and if he, in fact, is out, then, then we get, what do we get? The TJ then, McConnell. then you are playing the Nemhard. <laughs> well, then you might be playing TJ McConnell. I mean. Yeah, but it's been the Nemhard thing without him so far. Okay. But it could be, it could be TJ McConnell. You're right. Um, that's something we'll have to keep an eye out for. TJ McConnell's only 30 to 100. Could um, be both. Um, yeah, but, but Nemhard like put up, a, what do you put up? 55 and 65 the last two games, Halliburton didn't play okay. <laughs> something like that. Some, some crazy scroll back down there. Yeah, I see that. He's five and 38 and 38. Yeah, I guess it was, I guess it was three games I was playing over, but yeah, he's got, he's got a, he's got a monster ceiling without, without him. Um, all right. Are you ready to talk about, uh, what do you have next? Is it Toronto or do you have the Boston? No, I have a uh, Clippers Boston. And listen, I'll tell you, I, I took your advice uh, the other day and he did pretty, he did pretty well at really low ownership in, in kind of in, in without that many minutes is, is, the, is Robert Williams. Um, yeah. I played him on, uh, where's, I forget DraftKings or Fandle, whatever it is, but he was, he was excellent. I and mean, he was, he was, he had 15 rebounds in 21 minutes. Um, That's amazing. Yeah. Uh, and I have to say that at, at 4,300, uh, I'm just, I just kind of have to do it. I think <laughs> just that pay him a little respect for his good performance, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Um, as you can see, I'm being very quite analytical. I'm playing Levert just kind of feel like it playing Robert Williams to thank him for the good performance and all this stuff, but, <laughs> uh, but why not? I mean, what for 43, 4,300 is a pretty good price for someone like that. Um, I prefer, obviously, I was about to say, I prefer guys like Horford to be out, but if Horford was out, you know, then, then Robert Williams would be higher on. Um, so I, I like that. Um, boy, oh boy. Tatum, I guess. That's Paul George, I guess. So, you know, Paul George at 8,400 has got to be reason. I don't care who he's up against. Um, so, yeah, okay, let's let's try it. I, I will say Tatum and Paul George. Um, Kawhi, 7,800. Not quite going to get there, I don't think. So, for me, I'll, I'll maybe I'll take a shot at Paul George. I think that's a decent point, even though the matchup sucks. Uh, why not? Yeah, I mean, I have to say, I, I'm I, the first thing for me that I thought about with this game was Zubac. Um, you're going to get an unowned Zubac coming off of 47 in Toronto, 33 the night before in Detroit, um, 29 before that. The minutes are coming back, and you know his projection is really hard to figure out. But like you could make an argument that he should be projected six points higher, looking like one of the better plays on the slate. And you could make an argument that, that that he certainly has a chance to put up less than 20 fantasy points. But I think he's really interesting because of Boston playing one of Horford or, or Robert Williams a lot of the time. And I think that it's going to be harder for the Clippers to go small when that happens. The problem is the Clippers have more guys available tonight than they've basically had all season long. Paul George is a really good tournament play, in my opinion. Um, I don't see him as being like a must or a priority, but I do think that he's interesting. And I, I think I might do some of this Zubach thing because I think of the, the ownership is a little too appealing. So I have it as like basically like, a, you know, Robert Williams and Zubach both as being really interesting. It is kind of funny because people are going to play the Robert Williams because he's 900 cheaper than Zubach. But if you think about the actual upside, it's just such so immensely higher for a guy who's going to, who, you know, who could play 35 minutes versus a guy who's not going to play more than 20 or 22. Um, so it's just something to consider, but I, I like, so I, I'm open to Paul George. Uh, I'm in on Zubac a little bit as a low ownership. And I could say, I, I could, I literally think everybody is fine on Boston. If you wanted all the starters, I are in consideration. Um, I wouldn't, I don't think I'm going to play Brogdon. I think he's going to lose a little bit of the regular season minute run to, uh, to guys like Rob Williams, unless he's really got it going. And I think they just, they want him to stay healthy is their, their biggest priority. And, and, and Tatum and Tatum or Brown are, are all fine. I just don't see anybody I have to play. It is kind of interesting that Tatum has put up 60 in like, basically, what is he, four out of five games? 
maybe that's something you could do. You, the matchup looks bad on paper, and I don't think there is that any really that matchup that's, that's too bad for Tatum right now. So I think I guess Tatum would be my favorite from Boston, but we've mentioned a lot of spend ups, and, and he just rates right about the same as the other ones that we've mentioned so far for me. All right, uh, Memphis and Toronto. Yeah. Um, I guess you could play the two top guys there. I mean, I guess you could play uh, play Van Lee and uh, and Ja from this game um, with with the value that exists already. Um, probably can make it work and seems reasonable. Uh, they, they're they're not as highly rated as some of the other guys, um, but they're both pretty reasonable and they're in the same game, so. Take a shot at that. Uh, I don't really see much with respect to value. So I'll either play those guys or probably zero. It's a good real life game. Um, Memphis is really struggling. They, they, they haven't looked this bad in a while and trying to get Bain re, you know, back in. It doesn't quite look right. This has been a little bit tough for them. Um, I, I don't, I don't really see that as being like a good sound play to play the both guys in the worst matchup in basketball so it's fine you know but it, I, like Jaws Jaw never like just just his numbers with Bain there are just so much less it's harder to get to the 10k stuff he's always got a ceiling but Bain really does take away from some of that and even as Jaws had some good, decent games yet lately he hasn't put up a real fantasy number we can use Siakam just seems like he gets there all the time um, <laughs> but uh, this is not a good matchup uh, for what it's worth, between Jaron Jackson Jr., who's one of the best three or four defensive players in the NBA, and Stephen Adams, who's too busy, big and physically strong. So I, I don't really love a lot for fantasy in this one. Um, I might revisit that later because I, these are teams I tend to like to play guys from, but I don't like this matchup for either of them uh, from you know a ceiling standpoint. I think OG and Anubi is probably my favorite play here, and I think that uh, – on the other side, maybe either Bain or Steven Adams. I think Bain is getting his minutes back and and I'm just going to, you know, 7K is more than reasonable for him when he's fully healthy. So that's something I can consider. But this is a, this is more, this game is less interesting to me than any of the ones we've talked about so far for fantasy purposes, which of course means double overtime and everybody gets there. Something like that, yeah. All right, talk about your Knicks here, buddy. Yeah, so so uh, so Jarrett so, uh, Brunson was ruled out on the last game, and I said that he's got to be really hurt if he's going to miss that game against Dallas. That remains to be seen. Um, he remains questionable tonight, and we'll have to see what happens. You had R.J. Barrett, who played two minutes, and then he was hurt. So he's out. And just looking at Popcorn Machine, it doesn't, you know, Miles McBride came in for him and basically played the 43-plus minutes that, that – uh, that uh, that Barrett was going to play. So, yeah. but let's start with okay. If, if in fact Brunson is out, um, then these five guys on my screen, you know, these six guys on my screen. Excuse me, five guys on my screen: Grimes, McBride, Quickly, Randall, and Mitch Robinson will start and play forty-four minutes. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like that. If if Brunson is out, um, if Brunson is in then most of them are going to play 44 minutes. And one guy is going to be probably either left out or get a little less. So so if he is starting and back, I'm just totally speculating. It's going to be between Grimes, um, McBride, and Quickly to, to finish, to, to come up with two other spots. I imagine since Grimes has started before that he's going to be a starter. And then it's going to be between McBride and Quickly for who's going to be the fifth, and the other one is going to be coming off the bench. Don't think it matters too much. Um, uh, I, I think that all three of them are going to get the minutes. Uh, all of them are in play. Uh, as well, obviously, Brunson, he'll play his 44 minutes, you know, whatever it is. Um, so, look, when you have all those minutes, it usually correlates to good fantasy production. Unless there's a huge price uh, increase, which there has not been, but I mean, quickly at five k, McBride at thirty two hundred, Brunson at seventy four, uh, Mitch Rob fifty four hundred. Uh, his, you know, he was going to play forty three minutes anyway. Um, actually, that's not true. He wouldn't play forty three minutes. They bring Jericho Sims in for him, you know, whatever it is when he when they need to. Um, and then uh, and Julius Randle play forty four minutes. So all those guys are in play. Uh, I think the one thing you could do, I guess, is not worry too much about who starts between those three guards. Like if if 
one of them is 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 a little less it's not starting i imagine that if brunson is back then mcbride is going to be the, the the one that doesn't start yeah I, I, that's I, the case. But even though like quickly some but they like quickly coming off the bench yeah right? I, I, I actually could see that being a very real possibility which which yeah. might keep quickly's ownership a little bit lower yeah so uh the one that so so the, here's the thing so if, if the other thing about Barrett is that is that forget the minutes he takes up, he just shoots the ball so much, right? right. So, I mean, n- not that not that Julius Randle needs to shoot it any more than he already does, but but he can even shoot it more if, if somehow that that's humanly possible. Um, so we have to watch for the news on on obviously on Brunson. If Brunson is out, it's only only M three, and you're probably playing four decks if you want to know the truth. Um, yep. uh, if he's in, still think you're probably playing three. Um, and that's uh, kind of where I'm at. Uh, on the other side, um, yuck. I mean, I don't. That's that's another analytical term. I, I don't really see anybody projecting that great. So you have to kind of talk me into somebody. Um, I, 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 oh, we're going back to what's his name again? Hold on. So Let's see. yeah, what's his price? He like seven k yet? Oh, he's forty eight hundred. He's four. He's four eight hundred. Okay, you can sign me up for that. Uh, that'll, that'll be that'll be my main guy. Yeah, yeah. This game feels uh, very, very tempting to just go crazy with the Knicks. Um, Julius Randle has scored forty eight or more fantasy points in nine of his last eleven games. Um, I, I really don't know what the you know, like. I, I feel like him as a spend up. I feel a little bit better than I do everybody else because I know the minutes are guaranteed. The production is always there. He's projecting great again today, and I don't see any reason why that wouldn't be the case, especially with R.J. Barrett gone. R.J. Barrett and Brunson played most of those games. Um, I, I think you get some exposure to Mitch Robb, too, as one guy we didn't talk about. I think that everybody in this Knicks lineup, I'm going to probably set a minimum of, of two Knicks per lineup. Um, you're not even going to need to. You know what I mean? Like you're just yeah. going to get them anyway. You know, it's like, well, I don't, I don't, I don't. Oh, oh that's right. If you're not going to use the optimizer. Yeah. But I, but I, but I hear you. I mean, like, I really, really want to have exposure to this game, and I think that you know, prior prioritizing, like, obviously, quickly Brunson, even whether quickly starts or not, I really like him. But I really like Brunson and Randall as the main plays. I'm totally fine with mixing McBride into it, and and Grimes, who's going to be the lowest projecting, so maybe the lowest owned. Um, who's, you know, Grimes is Grimes is good. Well, yeah, he, I mean, as a real basketball player, he certainly is good. Like, I, I don't know how consistently we can expect him to put up fantasy game, games like right. the night, but I mean, he was terrific, and I think he should certainly be in consideration. So, minimum of two Knicks. I'm starting with Brunson and 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 Mitch and and Randall, but then then getting to to a lot of quickly, and then it comes uh, Mitch Rob. Well, depending on whether McBride starts, uh, Mitch Rob, Quentin Grimes, and McBride. But again, out of those six, the six main Knicks. I'll probably have a minimum of two in my lineups and I will have a lot of Sohan on the other side. Hard to find another play to really like if everybody's a go, which we don't know for sure, but as of right now, they are. Um, otherwise, we get a full game stack if you get Vassell or Keldon Johnson out. Uh, Trey Jones would, is, is certainly in play even with those guys and they're all in play, but uh, Sohan is the only one who I'm prioritizing right who now. Who is that guy, Sohan? Where is he from? He's awesome. He's going to be great. No, but where's where where do you know where he was? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, it doesn't. Oh, usually, usually you know like like what draft pick they were, like what they were the high school and all that stuff. No, I know there's a um, I I know, I know a little bit about Sohan, um, but I don't know. I think that he ended up when he was the ninth overall pick. He was uh, oh, he's Baylor. Baylor was Sohan. Yeah. Oh, okay, great. Um, he's he's really good. Um, but he's young, and there you know there's going to be some down games. He's no like love. Like you're not gonna have him. He's not like a lock at 4,800 that you're you know for sure is gonna get there. Even though he lately has been getting there all the time, uh, I'm not, I, I believe that's really who he is. So I, I'm gonna keep playing him. But I, don't be surprised if you get like 20 out of him one of these nights. They're not gonna they're not gonna overextend him like crazy. He's a, he's a, you know probably the most important part of their future along with Keldon Johnson um, and maybe the cell too. All right. Um, the last last game is pretty uninspiring if you want to know the truth. Yeah. Um, so you have Dallas is a pretty big favorite over over Houston. You have Luca at twelve k. Um, uh, there's not that much competition really for fantasy points. So you could make the case that the that the raw points are going to matter. But you know what? With I don't know. Those Knicks are going to score. Shake is probably going to score. 
Um, you know, I think I think Luke will be very fairly owned at about 10 percent, you know, 10, 12 percent, given his price. Um, and I, I, I have no issues with him other than, you know, other than blowout risk and stuff like that. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I'm not too worried about, you know, someone like him, you know, coming off of the obviously that monstrous performance the other day. If it was back to back, I would fade him, but not, you know, but he has he has the day off. So. Um, I think we'll just be right back to business. Like whatever that means in a game like this, you know, um, probably doesn't mean that much. You know, it probably means his normal minutes, they win by 10 and he'll get somewhere between, you know, 55 and 75, you know, like, like, right? like somewhere, probably somewhere, in the, somewhere in there. Um, I, as we've shown, I don't think you need him to win, uh, to win these slates. So even if he comes in with a 70, I don't think you actually have to have it. Um, other guys on Dallas, um, Christian Wood, he already had the, the hashtag revenge game in Houston, so I'm not too worried about that piece. Um, not not really a lot. I, I think the, the better, not better value. The Houston value, you have Sengun, 5,900, another center. And then I don't really feel like playing Eric Gordon, but he's 3,400. So I'm probably going to pass this yeah, I just want to point out something, though, that in relation to how we look at scoring that I think is interesting. When guys get really expensive and we start thinking that, like, and, I, and I'm one to do it, too, because, you know, it's going to be, like, even Luca, like, there's going to be guys in the 8 and 9K range who regularly score the same amount of fantasy points, so it seems like you could just save. But if you want sure things, I mean, like, anytime a guy is averaging more than five times what his cost is and, you know, he's got a good matchup, we would be interested at like any other price, but for some reason with Luca, I actually think he gets under owned and he's at, you know, he averages 63 fantasy points. You should argue, you could argue that he should be 13 K every slate. You could argue that for all the top guys, because they all sort of Giannis, um, Jokic, they, they, they average, their average is all more than five X of whatever we're paying for them at a very high price. So yeah. uh, it, it's just a matter of how you want to build today. I, I do think Luca is, is a really good play. I don't think there's a big enough price gap between him and these other guys. Um, so I, I, I am going to play, I, I will have some interest in, in getting to some Luca and Christian Wood. Uh, I think Christian Wood will have a bounce back. He was really bad in the last game in, in Houston. And I think he'll have a big game tonight against them, but is that good enough? And I'm not sure. Well, well, you know what? I mean, piggybacking on your point about, about Luca, um, you we already talked about it. You already talked about, the you know the Memphis Toronto game you know, those those two guys are competing for for projection but as you pointed out that's just kind of a bad you know not the greatest matchup in the world you know so mm -hmm. um I mean who's really going to compete for the lose Luca points I mean honestly I think only Shea if you want to know the truth um and and the, there's a difference between Shea points and Luca points you know what I mean there just is you know, it's like uh um I think the reason why Luca is going to be a little under a little bit today also is for two reasons. Number one is because of the blowout risk. And number so you could make the argument that if you if you do play Luca, it might not be the worst idea in the world to play someone from Houston. Or maybe maybe two guys from Houston, whatever. I don't know who it would be, but just just some variation where the game stays close. Um and people might want to say, well, I'm not playing Luca after you had a hurry 10 fantasy points. So maybe he maybe that has some dynamic, but I think I agree with you. I think I think now that I'm thinking about it, I think Luca. I don't know if I'll force him in or anything like that because I think I can get away with what I want to do without him. But I'm not going to fight it if I get to him anyway. Yeah, and and and, and if you did want to play guys on the other side, I actually think that everyone is reasonable. So they're like I, they're not guys who I naturally just want to play on their own, but they're all completely fine for their prices. Uh, Jabari Smith, Shangun, if Eric Gordon plays as a value, you could do that. Um, I probably would lean Jabari Smith or Shangun with with maybe either Gordon or Green, um, but I, I, it's not it's not the way I'm looking to stack at least at first look. My priorities are the the you know quickly Brunson, uh, Randall, uh, basically all the Knicks, <laughs> um, and trying to figure out two of them quickly Brunson and Randall being my favorite. Sohan being my favorite from, you know, just one of my favorite overall plays. I love the Zubac at low ownership. I really think that people are not, you know, that there, there's something to be said when, when they play against teams with other bigs. And, and he's also been really, really good lately. So I'm, uh, I, I am interested in that. 
Um, that's probably my lowest own love of the early slate. Uh, I do like Plumlee and, or Washington also. I think you play one of those two. Uh, Mitchell or Garland, SGA or Giddy as the priorities on this slate. And uh, it's a first look. We'll be live at 6 Eastern, and we'll talk a little wait, football. Wait, wait, I, I have one other thing. So I, just while we were doing this, I just ran a Saberson build with my initial okay. projections. Let's take a look. Just to see what how many we And as you might imagine, there's quickly Brunson, Baisley, obviously, or two, right? But then there's Randall, there's P.J. Washington right in there, and then more McBride, and then look, they have some some Hayward and 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 Lamelo. So they like that Charlotte game a little bit, and and OKC. But what's really interesting, and this is talk about putting it up in the ecosystem, you they rate they rate these these lineups by Saber score. Look who's in the freaking highest rated Saber score lineup right there is freaking Karis Levert. So annoying. Mm -hmm. Um. And, and, you know, because the funny thing is, is overall in 150 lineups, he's showing up in a grand total of 5%. Right. But for whatever reason, they're putting him in this one. So I'm, I'm just going to have, I'm just going to have to try it. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't mind. I don't mind the taking a fly. Oh, it's terrible. It's terrible. But no, no, I don't I'm, think it is because, because there is, there's also some possible blow, like there, there should, they don't have a ton of bodies. There is some potential blowout run here. I think that like if you wanted to get really creative and maybe if the slate was just a little smaller or had a few less plays that we like later. I think you can get really creative and play Kevin Love and Levert together. Um, it, you know, in a certain game script that could certainly pay off, but it's, it is hard. It is hard to imagine because these, you know, these guys for the Cavs play a lot of minutes to starters. So it's, it's kind of hard for them to find too much time. How about the Levert, TJ McConnell? Kevin? All right. Levert, um, Levert McConnell, Nemhard and Kevin Love. And there you go. Measure <laughs> your value. <laughs> yeah. Come then, 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 then hope the Nick game, uh, hope the Nick game doesn't, doesn't get there. And then you have to play the two expensive Knicks and, and you right. go from there. So, and, okay. So we'll be back at six, but just things to keep an eye on. Uh, keep it, we'll keep an eye on uh, Jalen Brunson, obviously. That's obviously a really big piece. Uh, Tyrese Halliburton is obviously a really big piece. And as we like to say, also, we're waiting on the stuff that we don't know what we're waiting on yet. So Exactly. All right. Well, yeah, that's it. And uh, sounds good. Good luck to everybody. And we'll see you guys at six Eastern. Great.